Hello, everyone. Welcome back to The Wyatt Claypool Show. And although I want to talk about some serious issues today, I'm going to generally keep the episode light. Because every once in a while, I have an absolute plethora of weird leftist TikTok videos come across my feed, and I make sure to save them so I can show you people them and torture you along with myself by seeing their terrible takes on Canadian politics. And I've noticed as we get closer and closer to the next federal election, the realization that Pierre Polyev is inevitably going to become the next Prime Minister of Canada is slowly getting into these people's heads, and it's making them absolutely freak out and flail around. But before I get into some of these videos, I just want to quickly plug something, and that is my website in the description below, as well as pinned at the top of the comments alongside my fundraiser, WyattClaypool.com. Ever since I stopped running for the nomination in Calgary Signal Hill, which I would have won, but was removed from dishonestly by people in the party, I have basically been using it as a way of organizing for other nominations for other good candidates. So if you sign up on my website on the contact form, depending on if there's a nomination race that happens in your specific federal riding, provincial riding, or if there's a leadership race in your province, I can recommend good people to you in those areas. Anyways. Without further ado, also make sure to like and subscribe to the channel and all that. I want to get to the first video here, and all of these are actually posted by leftist accounts. These aren't not like terrible videos that conservatives have clipped and like are looking at them thinking like, oh my goodness, somebody thought this was good. This is the left who thinks these videos are good. Let's start off with this one right here. And this is all from this one account, Bev, who is themselves a big liberal. And I just go around following them because they post all of this nonsense. And this video is, I guess, what a lot of people on the left would define as cooking. This older lady in this video is cooking because she's saying nasty things or catty things about Pierre Polyev. I find leftist content so lazy these days. So much of it is just posing. Oh, I... It's just, uh, Pierre Polyev's a, a, a stupid man-child. Uh, Pierre Polyev's an idiot. Pierre Polyev is a bad guy. And like the left is like, yes, yes, that's very good. Thank you for saying that. Nobody's ever said that before. And they make no real point. And oftentimes their points are just being upset that Pierre Polyev is popular. But I will prove that to you today through this video first. But we have a lot to get through. Knock, knock. Who's there? Not Elections Canada. Nope. Elections Canada is sleeping on the job. Um, has anyone else noticed that Pierre Polyev, the little weasel, has been campaigning across the country on taxpayers' dime for a Oh my goodness, guys. Sound the alarm. Pierre Polyev is, is, is campaigning. A politician's campaigning while they're working? Wow. That's, that's never been done before. I don't even know what this person thought they stumbled across. Like, they were the one to notice that Pierre Polyev uses his office budget as the leader of the opposition to go and campaign on the policies that he's promoting and criticizing Jeff Trudeau. That's literally his job. But for some reason, people think that this is like a gotcha on Pierre Polyev. Months and months and months, but maybe a year. Uh, shh, don't look. He's campaigning across the country. We're paying for it. It's illegal. Yeah. It's actually literally not illegal. You're allowed to talk about politics in politics, it turns out. And again, let me remind you, this is not a parody account. This is an account that is run by someone who thinks this is good content. They actually, unless it's like a, an elaborate troll and they're only highlighting the absolute worst TikTok videos possible. But I've never gotten that impression. Where are you, Elections Canada? I mean, and where are you, mainstream media? There's another good story for you that you're completely mum about. But whoa, Justin Trudeau stays at a classy Holiday Inn in Sudbury for a caucus meeting and PP's all over that. The audacity, you got to give him points for audacity to draw attention to the fact that he stayed in this high-end this happened months ago. Like, I even highlighted that story and talked about how the conservative party was being absurd by trying to call it like a lavish, uh, like retreat with the Ontario Liberal Caucus. And they were in like a holiday in Sudbury. It was stupid. That was obviously not pure poly of directing them to say that. It's probably just some uh, silly communications person. But the fact that this and the left does this constantly you say one thing that they didn't like, and it could be objectively wrong, and they will glom onto that. 
forever. That is the only thing that they know about you forever. Justin Trudeau could be like throwing cats in a wood chip or somewhere. And it's, 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 uh, who cares? Who, who cares? Even though the whole point is, I guarantee somebody jumped the gun inside the conservative party and called it lavish because literally everything Justin Trudeau does overseas is overly lavish, like paying hundreds of thousands of dollars for like a few days accommodations in London or Paris or wherever he happens to be or going on vacation in Jamaica. And I understand the prime minister is entitled to spend more money than the average politician since they are the leader of the country and should be well accommodated or well appointed. But the idea that now this is the big hit on Polyev, this is why he's not he's not equipped to be prime minister and Elections Canada needs to investigate him for campaigning is the height of desperation. Holiday Inn in downtown Sudbury. While he's jetting all over the country, uh, campaigning, yes, they're not rallies, He's campaigning on our dime. So, so what's the difference between rallies and campaigns in her mind? That there is some legal distinction here that should get him like locked up or whatever. Uh, when is Elections Canada going to do something about this? What is the deeper story? Why is everyone so afraid to call out this little weasel's bullshit? I, oh my, this person exists. This person, for some reason, has a TikTok account, is making videos, and other leftists consume it. That's the thing I don't understand. People actually think this is great content. But let's 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 jump over to an actual liberal MP for a second here. This is a statement made in the House of Commons that demonstrates to me at least just that the liberals don't have anything. And I'm going to preface this by saying I'm a very pro-life person. I wish the Conservative Party was actually more pro-life on many issue fronts. But the thing that the idea that the liberals are going to score points and dig back the vote that they used to have by complaining at the conservatives for not being like sufficiently pro-choice or like not even pro-choice. The liberals are not pro-choice. They're, they're complete goblins on this issue. They literally voted with the NDP and the Bloc Québécois against a bill to have upgraded sentencing for people who kill pregnant women. That was considered too pro-life for them. They're just nutcases. But now they're going to try and shame the conservative party over being like, I don't know, not insane. It's our body, our lives our choice. Abortion care is health care. Yes. But the Liberals keep letting Conservative premiers erode access while these Conservatives creep anti-choice legislation into Canada. Okay. Conservative cuts mean no family doctor. I'll, 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 I'll correct myself. This was actually Laurel Collins from the Liberals. I think I had other clips of the Liberals making or from Laurel Collins from the NDP. I had another clip of the Liberals that I'll bring up later on this. No midwives, no nurses to staff clinics. This isn't real access. Everyone should be able to get health care when they need it, including abortion care. Will the Liberals enforce the Canada Health Act to stop conservative attacks on abortion? How there, we are a country that does not actually have any restrictions on abortion at all. And somehow there are still politicians in the NDP and the Liberals who constantly complain about lack of access. Now I'm going to show you this one new thing that the Liberals are on about, and specifically Justin Trudeau. So he is my Liberal example today. They're going after, uh, they're going after crisis pregnancy centers right now, which are pro-life organizations where they help pregnant women through their pregnancies, and they actually try and get free resources to women after they've delivered their children who, if they have problems paying for certain basic necessities. So they're organizations that actually completely counter the leftist narrative that pro-lifers don't actually care about the child after the baby's born. They obviously do. And now the liberals are fight, falling all over themselves. Or I guess this is in a clip by, of Justin Trudeau. But now the liberals are falling all over themselves to try and turn this, the fact that uh, these uh, crisis pregnancy centers exist, as a big threat to like choice rights or whatever. is isn't one that is made lightly. It's a decision that is rooted in reflection, uh, weighing personal life circumstances, weighing realities. And far too often women across Canada seeking birth control and abortion care face judgment. They face misinformation and fear tactics when all they really need are clear answers and compassionate support. No matter how someone gets into that room, whatever life events led them there, they deserve evidence-based information, and frankly, they deserve respect. We believe that all Canadians are entitled to have the information they need to freely make decisions about their own bodies. 
and have access to the medical care and services that they deserve. Now, if that sounded like leftist gobbledygook to you and you couldn't really tell what she was even getting at there, that is basically intentional because she doesn't actually have a real point. So their big hit on crisis pregnancy centers is that they don't advertise that they don't provide abortions. And now the liberals, and you can see it in the headline right below her in the video that the liberals uploaded to X, it says, federal legislation would require some charities to disclose whether they provide abortion services. Crisis pregnancy centers that fail to follow pro proposed rules would risk losing their charitable status. So because of this organization, without taxpayer money, is helping pregnant women without offering abortion services, basically offering every alternative except abortion services, that means that they're bad because they're not telling people enough that they don't do them. They obviously do not perform them, and now they could lose their charitable status for not mentioning it. Even though they don't get taxpayer money, they just have the ability to give people tax rebates. This is openly insane. My friend Elissa uh, 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 Globe, yeah, Globe, I always forget how to say her last name. I'm sorry, Alyssa, over at the pro-life organization right now made the very funny comment that this would be like having the David Suzuki Foundation have to say that it does not indeed drill for oil. You don't have to say what you don't do. I'm pretty sure this would probably be one of the first instances in Canadian history that if an organization doesn't tell you that it doesn't do something, that they could have their charitable status or license taken away. That's absolutely insane. But the liberals are so far behind in the polls, and they think this whole pro-abortion issue is going to be really good for them, that they're pushing it regardless of the fact that there's nobody on the other side of this issue. There's nobody on the other side of this issue because they didn't know that they had to be on the other side of this issue because this was just how everything worked for the longest time and nobody had a problem with it. There, even pro-abortion activists don't really have a problem with this because I've never heard them complain about it in the past. Yeah, they'll whine about pro these organizations because they infringe on their business, but overall, they don't actually care because it's like they're not stopping them. All they do is basically inform people on the other side of the issue and try and provide them resources if they want to keep their child. It's absolutely insane. Now it's time for us, after we have looked at some professional liberals speaking on po uh, policy issues, we must now go back, I am sorry, to the uh, leftist TikTokers, which, I don't know, this should be fun. I think you guys will like this. Uh, all this content is just so bad, but here, here we go. Here's another one up uploaded by Bev to prove to you that, yes, this lady actually does think that this stuff is good content. Pierre Polyev goes out today and he says to Justin Trudeau to name the names, name people that are compromised in our government. Let me know who they are. But here's the part that's actually interesting. So if you know anything about the way the government works, these names of the people that are compromised are actually classified. Dude, who is it classified by? You'll be shocked to hear that the government saying it can't hand over names because they're classified we're also in charge of classifying those names and are presumably, because this is how it works everywhere, are able to unclassify those names. So the leftists are excusing the liberal for hiding traitors because it's classified information. So liberals don't have to give it over, even though they were the ones who classified it and could unclassify it. And it's technically illegal for the government to release these names, they haven't been actually screened properly. And as we know quite well, Pierre has yet to be screened to receive the information about the India situation. So it's very... Actually, no, it, it has to do with the Nisikop report about China for the most part. This guy doesn't... And I, I can probably just leave this guy right now. These people don't know what they're talking about. I find so many times leftists just know a few word talking points. They know that Polly have no, no security clearance. They know classified information. And they kind of just kind of keep jamming these. And they also know the word India. So they know for this specific issue, they know the word India, which is bad. And they then for some reason, uh, like unfairly say that India is bad and then connect it to Polyev. And then they know that Polyev doesn't have a security clearance, even though they don't know the reason why he's not getting that security clearance, which is because if he gets it, he can't talk about the issue publicly anyways making the security clearance completely useless. And then they know that the information is technically classified. 
So they just kind of jam all three of those words together randomly and hope that they come out with a good argument, having not actually studied the issue at all. I think that video is a little bit quieter too. Sorry if I ever play a video and you have to turn up the audio a little bit to hear what's going on, but uh, it's some people upload videos and the audio is just horrible, where even if you have it cranked up, you can't really hear it that well. But now let's move on to a more polished leftist TikToker, and that is Frank Dominic, our boy right here, our boy from the streets, uh, who is somehow a school teacher in Ontario, and is going to tell us that Pierre Polyev is like Donald Trump because Donald Trump is vaguely bad, and that means Pierre Polyev is vaguely bad because he said some vague things that are like Trump. Really shouldn't be comparing Pierre Polyev ever to Trump, but sometimes he says things that are literally exactly the same as what Trump has said. For example... So, so he's saying, okay, we shouldn't be usually comparing... Donald Trump and Pierre Polyev, they're very different people, and it's a lazy comparison. I've heard him say something along those lines in other videos. So we shouldn't be comparing the two. Cut to literally half a second later. But sometimes they say things that are somewhat the same, and we can compare them. And it's going to get wild from here. The things he's highlighted to give himself license to make this lazy comparison are absolutely ridiculous. Well, Pierre probably ever thinks that it would be unfair if the liberals were to replace Trudeau as their leader, which is literally the view that Donald Trump held and still holds about Kamala Harris replacing Joe Biden. That is actually not a good use of the word literally. Those are two very different situations. Polyev's argument is that Pierre, Justin Trudeau would be running out on his own policies that he thinks are wildly popular. So why don't you stick around and fight for them in the next election? Also, Justin Trudeau is sticking around to fight for the next election. And Donald Trump had the position that it was unfair to swap out Joe Biden with Kamala Harris, not in like a legal sense, but just in a you know sportsmanship sense, because Kamala Harris never had to go through a primary. So she artificially got to introduce herself very close to the election date and was able to duck some scrutiny from the media. It's not going very well for her, but that was why it was seen as a bit of big advantage to Kamala Harris to be able to have Joe Biden thrown out as the uh, nominee after he was he won the primary because he knows that Kamala Harris would have never gotten to this point if she ran in a primary because in 2020 she didn't even make it to the first state. Anyways, I'll let him keep going and making giving us more spine chilling uh, comparisons between Polyev and Trump. Polyev stating that it would be not fair for the Liberals to oust Prime Minister Justin Trudeau now, as they are morally obligated to keep him. Yeah, I'm pulling well against this guy, so you're morally obligated to keep him. It's not like we've been saying Trudeau must go for years now. You guys have to keep him. We want you to keep yeah. him. Yeah, he said morally obligated. He's not saying legally obligated, and he didn't say because I'm pulling better than him. Frankly, Polyev would crush any of the current liberal uh, hypothetical new leaders. The whole point is that they're morally obligated because they've been in such denial of his unpopularity for so long that they should run him. They should run him to show that the conservatives are right and not come up with a lazy excuse as to why Justin Trudeau is too busy kayaking to be able to fight this next election keep Trudeau. We want Trudeau to be the liberal leader. At the same time, Trudeau bad. Trudeau needs to get out of here. We need to get rid of Trudeau as soon as possible. No, I, actually, no. The whole point is that they had been saying to get rid of Trudeau for so many years that now the conservatives are saying, okay, you guys now run him in the next election. That's their point. We've been telling you to get rid of him for years because he sucks at his job. So now what? Actually, you guys run him in 2025. Let's see how that goes. And they've been telling to get rid of him previously, not because he was polling better than them, but it's because he's deeply corrupt. Is that not a factor in Frank Dominic's mind? Listen, I get it. Pierre wants to run against Trudeau. And I know that Trudeau wants to run against Pierre. Trudeau thinks that he can beat him. And Trudeau doesn't want to back down from that fight. He doesn't want to lose. But I do think that at this time, Trudeau is actually morally obligated to step down. Most Canadians don't want to see him as prime minister anymore. And I think many liberals and progressives would like to see a new face of the party. And according to polling, it's looking like Mark Carney is the best person to replace Trudeau at this time. Would Trudeau step down. And if he does, who do you think should replace him? He would, he, Mark Carney barely pulls much better than Justin Trudeau. It basically shows that maybe 12% of people would consider voting liberal a little bit more if he was the leader. And that's among current liberal supporters. Some of those numbers are derived from. I, I, I don't pre-screen these videos. So I assumed he was going to have a second argument. Let's go back to what he said at the start of this video as the setup. Really shouldn't be comparing Pierre Paul ever to Trump, but sometimes he says things that are literally exactly the same as what Trump has said. Sometimes he says things that are literally the same as what Trump has said. What was literally the same there? 
those are two different arguments. He never even cited what Donald Trump said about replacing Joe Biden with Kamala Harris. And then he gives one example. That was the only example. If you're going to say sometimes they say things that are literally the same, can we, you know, respect that plural of things, not just thing, and give a second example? This is so weak. This is so pathetic. What is, who, who watches these people? That's the thing I get from leftist TikTokers. As I watch their content, I'm just wondering, who is this appealing to? It's just snarkiness. It's, again, like I was saying at the start, it's like, oh, man, this guy's cooking. No, he's not. He's just catty. He's just a whiner. There was this one guy, JB Politics 101. I think his name's Justin Burroughs. In fact, that is actually is literally his name. I criticized with a couple other people his video on polling saying why polling doesn't matter. And he basically tried to say that, well, you know, polling between elections can be all over the place. You don't really know how a race is going to be until three weeks before. And me and uh, and, Can and the great Canadian bagel and another guy, I forget his name on the fly here. But like we were just pointing out that, yeah, with this, yeah, yeah, if it's like a word, the conservatives are up five points on the liberals and it's a year away from the election, that probably doesn't mean too much. If you're 22 points ahead of the liberals and back when we made this video, they were like 16, 17 points ahead. That means something. That's not nothing. That's not just, you know, pol polls are weird between elections. He blocked me for that. For just pointing that out. These people don't care about being accurate. In fact, Justin Burroughs is also a convicted criminal, by the way. Uh, you can go look it up. He actually stole $5,000 from an ex-employer, which is really funny when he's also a socialist and he just believes in, eth he doesn't believe that capitalism is ethical at the same time he has proven himself to be a thief. But whatever. These people are absolutely just trash at making political content because, again, they just remember a few different words. You know, they know that polls can sometimes be a little bit wonky in the middle of elections. They're like, that means polling doesn't matter. It actually does. It means that sometimes a lead can evaporate over time. A 20-point lead? Unless something crazy happens, no. I talk a lot about Steve Boot's videos. He wants that my first interaction with him ever was him saying that the IDF in Gaza was planting copies of Mein Kampf, Arabic copies of Mein Kampf, to make the Palestinian people look bad. And his evidence because Steve Boots is such a absolute super sleuth was the fact that the Arabic copy of Mein Kampf had the German word Mein Kampf on it, had the German title on the front cover, even though the rest of the subhead and everything was in Arabic and the wording in the book was Arabic. He thought that was a plant. So I guess Western viewers would be able to recognize the book. He fails to remember that oftentimes when books very heavily associated with a specific foreign country and language, they tend to associate that language on the front cover. I pulled out my own copy of Sun Tzu's Art of War and found the cover, and then I sent him what the cover was, because you'll notice that the English copy of Sun Tzu's Art of War has Cantonese on the front, but Steve Boots doesn't think, because he only thinks about dunking on the guy he, that he's like attacking at the moment. All these guys are just going for the quick gotcha. If you watch this, and actually this is good, I'm remembering this right now, did you guys watch those videos from Jubilee where Charlie Kirk and Ben Shapiro end up debating a lot of students or at least younger liberal leftist people? It's hard to watch because all these people know is gotcha games. They get up and Ben Shapiro will be talking about an issue and he'll say a word and that person will, collect, will grab onto that word. And then they'll start trying to hit Ben Shapiro with random non-sequitur red herrings that they don't actually care about, they're, but they're trying to... Uh, trip them up. So at one point in a, one of the discussions with one of these students, because it kind of cycles really fast, I guess the idea is this, if the student debating Ben Shapiro is making a bad argument, people will put up a red flag. And if they go over 50% of people thinking they're making a bad argument, they replace them. This one guy was debating Shapiro. And Shapiro was saying that, well, the reason why the October 7th attack happened in Israel was that basically the leaders of Hamas were trying to take away or the Palestinian authority and, and the Palestinian like people who hate Israel, they were trying to take away attention from the Abraham Accords moving forward. And so they started this attack in order to basically get onto the, head, the front pages of the newspaper and make this the issue of the Middle East again. And it's like the guy sitting there, I can't play a clip because it's probably copyright, but the guy sitting there, he, you can see the wheels turning in his head. He hears newspaper front page. 
And then he basically says, oh, do you think Palestinians should be on the back page of the newspaper? That they shouldn't be talked about? That they should be silenced? And it's like, shut up. What? You're not arguing. This is just word association nonsense. And so often when I'm debating liberal people, I'll be talking about uh, an issue and I'll be mentioning something about like taxes or housing or rezoning. And someone will glom onto a single word I say and just start like battering me with stupid questions on that singular word that does not actually portray what my argument is. You never get to your point because if you get to your point, they won't have a good ability of actually firing back on you. Anyways bit of a rant there at the end, but I know some people don't mind that as long as I keep it towards the end. So all the people who don't like watching through the entire video, don't get annoyed and run away. Uh, But that should be it for me today, guys. If you want to support the show, you can donate to the gifts and go in the description below and pinned at the top of the comments below. If you want to sign up on my website for nomination and leadership campaign uh, recommendations, make sure you sign up at wyattclaypool.com also in the description and pinned at the top of the comments below. And make sure to leave a comment, leave suggestions for future videos. I don't always accept them, obviously, but as I read through them, sometimes it spurs my imagination and it gives me kind of good ideas of things to talk about and uh, make sure to cover. I have a few more things I'm probably going to put out in this coming week that I already have pre-planned, like the Danielle Smith leadership review video where I want to go over her record and why I'm going to vote the way I'm going to vote at the UCP AGM. And then I might do a bit of a deeper dive on the specific issue about the uh, pregnant uh, crisis pregnancy centers, because this is a truly disgusting attack on these uh, Christian pro-life organizations who don't get taxpayer money. All they get to do is write out uh, charitable tax receipts for doing good work and for helping pregnant women and and young mothers uh, who do not have the resources to be able to care for their own child. They give them basic necessities. And this is somehow evil because they're not delivering abortions. It's insane. Anyways, that's it for me today, guys. Have a good one.